I welcome you again to this wonderful time of encounters with the Holy Spirit. Any genuine encounter you have with the Holy Spirit moves your destiny forward. It brings you to the place where you become an enviable destiny, where you become so colorful that people will envy you. The more encounters you have, the larger your sphere of envy. Nations can envy you. Look at this young man, Isaac, in Genesis chapter 26, based on the encounter he had with God that gave him direction. He didn't live where he wanted to uh, run away from. And that direction he got from God made him to stay in the same place and planted in the same place, sowed in the same place, in the same year, he had a hundredfold returns. Why? Divine direction is what we need. Divine direction will make your life very great. Divine direction, if you walk in it, will definitely clothe you with kingdom proofs, infallible proofs that people will look at you and they will see the help of God. Just like the king, the people gathered to him, they said, because we see the help of God in your life and God is with you. So divine direction is a primary fancy. It's a must if you must live an enviable life on earth. It's not something you wish away. When we're talking about divine direction, we're talking about the unfolding of God's plan part time. You need to know, God will never show you everything. He shows you where he's taking you to. He will show you how to get there. And as you obey and begin to take the steps, he'll begin to reveal one step at a time. And that's all you need. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 13, he says, I don't seek my own will. It is his will. He said, as I hear from him, then I judge. As I hear, I do. It's very, very important. We began to explain in the other series which you need to check out. Because God has plans for every one of us. It is his plan. It is not my plan or your plan. We are sent to planet Earth to follow his plan, to fulfill his purpose for our lives. We are sent to planet Earth to primarily occupy our own space our sure place in his big picture. He has a master plan. In his master plan, we have our little, little, little spaces there. And that is what is called the sure place. Isaiah chapter 22, verse 23 to 25. That is what is called the race. We are all running a race. Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, seeing that we are compassed by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us. Then we now have to pick up ourselves with patience to run the race, the race that is set before us. Paul says, I have finished my race, not another man's race. May you never run another man's race. May you never be the one found plowing in another man's garden. May you be found plowing in your own garden, because that's where your relevance is. And once you are no more relevant, you'll be relegated to the junkyard. That's the way it works. So that's where your money is. That's where your popularity is. That's where your fame is. In divine direction, that's where it is. Otherwise, you would have led a, an empty and useless life on earth. God sent us here to profit, to live a profitable life. That's why in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, God says, I will teach your hand to profit. He wants us to profit. He wants our profiting to appear for all eyes to see. That's why in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, he appeared unto them alive by many infallible proofs. Why? Because they were where they were told to be. In Luke chapter 24 verse 49, Jesus said, Hey, look, I'm giving you direction. Go to Jerusalem. Tarry there until you be endued with power, until you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send it. So we understand it. So God believes in our profiting. That's why in that Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, he says, I will teach your hands to profit. He said, and I will lead you. 
the way you should go. God wants to lead us. And he now says, walk you in it. That's how we we'll show you. But it is your this business, your desire to walk in it. I will unfold it to you. That is the vision, my vision for your life. Just understand it. God is ever willing to show us. That's why Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, Call upon me and I will show you. I will answer you and show you greater and mighty things which you do not know. So one of the principal ways we assess the plan of God is through prayer. So note that number one, prayer. So it's important to know that this is God, there is a, a plan from God for our lives, for your life and for my life. It is not the plan you coin for yourself. It is from God. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said, the plan I have for you, for you. He said, they are not plans of evil. They are plans to give you a future. They are plans to bring you to an expected end. That's the destination. That's where people get destiny. The word destiny is from destination. There is an end that God wants us to arrive. And you can't arrive that if you don't work in your purpose. The reason why you're here. There is a reason you're here. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 25. He said there is a way that seems right unto a man. That is man's own way. You look at it, you take feasibility studies. But he said the end of that road are the ways of death. So any option you take at that end leads you to death because you left God's pattern for your life. Our God is a God of pattern. That's why he said to Noah, build this ark according to my pattern, not your own. Proverbs chapter 14, 12 says the same thing. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. I pray you are not cornered to take the wrong way in your life. That you seek divine direction. Don't forget divine direction is the unfolding of God's plan for you part time in all situations and at all times. A woman was going to marry into a particular family. He noticed that the husband happened to be the fifth son and the fifth child of the family. They had, the family had five sons. All the four sons were married at the time, and all of them had girls, girls, five, five, five. No male child. And she said, this pattern cannot be what God really desires. Then if it is God, first I must pray. So you assess the plan of God for your life, the direction of God for your life, number one, through prayers. And she had to go into prayers. She began to pray and to fast. Don't forget that fasting is a catalyst to prayer. It adds fire to prayer. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, this kind, this issue, this issue does not go out except by prayer and fasting. In other words, there are some kind issues that you have to add fasting to prayer. So we, we, we must understand this very, very well. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8, it says, when you are doing the right fast, it says, the light of God shall spring forth. There will be an outburst of light. What does that light mean? To give us direction. So that we will not group in darkness and everything will be out of course. No way. So there are certain times you need to fast. For us, we stopped our, we uh, ended our 40 fast, our 40 days prayer fasting uh, three days ago, but we are still on it. We are ending it tentatively today, the 43rd day. That is the 31st of January, because January is the first of the months. So we are giving God the first of the month, the first of the month to him, the tithe of the year to him. We are giving him the first fruit of the month, January, to him. And it has been our custom for some years now, since 1999 until date. I pray you'll understand, but that is not the cause of my message. Why are we doing that actually? Is so that we we'll know the right focus, the right direction with God for us for the year. And he has been so faithful. We start it in December and end 
uh, as we are ending today, 31st of January, before we used to end it on the 10th of February. But this is the time we are ending it on the 31st. I pray you will not make mistakes. So this lady began to pray. And then she had a direction from God. She had God clear. He said, marry him, but on the day of your honeymoon, make sure you don't sleep with him. Make sure you don't sleep with your husband until you're married. And they married. She left for honeymoon. The husband didn't like it, but she left. Seven days. When the honeymoon was supposed to be for seven days, she went to seek the face of the Lord in prayer and fasting. And then, right there, she, when she was done, she came back, slept with the husband. She was pregnant. She had a baby boy. Another problem came up. There will always be challenges. And we need to know the mindset of God on how to deal with those challenges. So divine direction is a must. It's part time. Part time. Part time. God will never show you everything. He can show you where he's taking you. But there are challenges on the way. So you need God to show you each step of the way to summon them. To show you the secret of your enemies. To show you the secrets to get to your next level or real level to show you the secret of yourselves. That's the way it works. To show you the secret of your stubborn problems. When you call, he will show you, call upon me. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. He said, I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things which you don't know of. God is a revealer of secrets. Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He knows the deep and secret things which you don't know. And he said, Revealer is the one that will reveal them to us. So we must understand. Daniel used this ambience, went to seek the face of the Lord in prayer. From Daniel chapter 16 to Daniel chapter 22, essentially uh, uh, verse 29. Then God revealed the secret of the dream, the king's dream, and the interpretation to him. Because he went to pray and seek for it. Daniel again in Daniel chapter 9. He knew that the captivity of Israel, of Jerusalem, ought to be over the 70 days. So it was called 70 days, but 70 years. An interpretation. Then maybe he felt it, he went to the Lord to pray and to fast. And the Lord gave him direction for the restoration of Jerusalem. We need this. So primarily, we can get it to prayer, communing with God. Communing with God. And this lady went back again to pray because another problem ensued. This, she gave birth to a baby boy, surgery where there were no complications. But the boy began to cry. Cry, 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 cry. And in crying, the young baby became aggressive. They tried everything. The doctors didn't provide any solution. She went back to pray. And as she was praying that night, an angel appeared, tapped her, and they all left the confines of the house. And she found herself in a witchcraft meeting. And she saw some people in a circle, all of them with horse whip. And they were beating a particular child. And the child was crying. The angel said, look very well at that child which she did, and she found that was her baby. He said, go and pick up your baby. She went, picked up the baby, and as she picked up the baby, wanted to leave. One of them in the circle said, come, who authorized you to come to change the pattern, the history of this family? The angel did like this, don't say anything. She took the baby, and then she found herself in her house. And that was how that problem was solved. The baby stopped crying. I pray today that God, the Almighty, shall open your eyes to see great and wondrous things in the name of Jesus. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Look at the prophet Elisha. Pray this for the servant. He said, Oh Lord, open his eyes. And the Bible said, God opened his eyes. And he saw that whole mountain was surrounded by the host of heaven. Much more than the Syrian army. I'm praying for you today. My God shall open your eyes. 
you shall begin to see the secrets of your enemies, the secrets of your life, the secrets of your stubborn problems, the secrets of your environment, of your community, of your neighborhood, of your nation, the secrets of the nations of the world, the secrets of the problem in the healthcare of the world, in the name of Jesus, so that you will not be a cheap victim in the affairs of life. You need divine direction. Part time concerning the issues. Don't think you know it. Just ask God. Ask God. And in prayer, there is something. You have to be watchful. Watchful means being spiritually sensitive. So that you don't clamor yourself with too many things. Because in the midst of it, you will see God in action. That's why Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He said, I stand on my watch. I'm praying and I'm watching in prayer. I am sensitive to see what he will tell me. Prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. I must get direction from God so that I'll know what the answer then when I'm reproved. Every day, the world is asking us questions and we need to proffer answers. That makes us relevant and that makes us far above all the elements of the world. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and verse 9. He said, as the heavens are apart from the earth, so God's thoughts and God's ways are far from that of man. So if we want to be high above or prayed from the heavenlies, he that comes from above is above all. So every day, when you get direction from God, then you are coming from above. You are above all the elemental things. So you, we must hear God. We must see visions of God so that we can have direction. God is ever willing to unfold these things to us. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, he said the secret things of God are with God. But the one he reveals to man is for man and for the children, for our possession. It is what we see we can possess. Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. I pray our eyes, our spiritual eyes, will continually be open to discern the things that God is showing us part time and will have great understanding of those issues. Absolutely important. And I want you to understand again you have to quieten yourself to be spiritually sensitive. God does not only show us visions, God speaks to us. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, he said, And you shall hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Our spiritual eyes will not only be opened, our ears will hear God in the name of Jesus. It takes sensitivity to hear God. It takes sensitivity to see the visions of God. The visions of the night like in the dream. So that you will not be confused. John chapter 10 verse 27. He said, my sheep, they hear my voice. I know them for they will follow me. How can you follow whom you, and you don't see where he's going? How can you follow whom you don't hear from? That's why the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me through the paths of righteousness. He leads me, I follow. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, Follow me and I will make you. How will I follow when I don't can hear? How will I follow when I can see? So through prayers, through watchfulness, we see and we hear. In First Kings chapter nineteen, from verses eleven down, Elijah ran, and then God passed through him. He needed direction. There was a wind, but God was not in the wind. 
There was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. There was fire. God was not in the fire. But Elijah did not allow the earthquake, the fire, and the wind to distract him. He was very sensitive. And the Bible now says there was a still, small voice. Sensitivity makes you to hear. And then he moved to the cave. And God began to give him visions. Uh, began to speak to him clearly. And God says, Return to the wilderness of Damascus. Why do you live there? Go back there. He said, Anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. That is direction. Anoint Elisha, the son of Japhat of Abel. Anoint him as a prophet in your room to replace you. So he had a direction. At that time, he knew it was not finished with him. And that was how Elisha came into the scene. That was how Jehu came into the scene. And that was how Hase came into the scene. And he told him that the sword, who escaped the sword of Hazel, then Jehu will kill. Whoever escaped the sword of Jehu, then Elisha will finish. So he now had direction. This is the direction of your ministry now. May you begin to get direction for your business now. A lot of people go into businesses that are dead businesses. The business could have functioned yesterday, but no more relevant now. Your business must be current, meeting the current needs of people for now. You need direction. You need to ask for it. You need to be sensitive. God will give you a vision. He will make you to hear. These things you can get through in worship. Because when you worship God in spirit and in truth, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, God wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we do that, something happens. God will invade us with his visions and with his words. I pray we don't miss it again in the name of Jesus. I pray we don't miss it again in the name of Jesus. We have to be watchful and we have to be sensitive and then see God in action. Say, I must worship God. I must be sensitive in the name of Jesus. God created us with hearing ears to hear him. And that's the way it works. So we must worship God. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. Ahab, Jehoshaphat, and another king came to Elisha. The valley was dry. There was no water for them, for their beasts. There was so much problem, like there has always been. See, over time, each time things happen, like in some countries, African countries, all over, all over the world, there are issues. But somebody has the answer. It is God. So somebody can download the answer from heaven. Joseph has said, is there not a prophet in this place? And they went to meet Elisha. Ahab said rubbish about Elisha. That doesn't matter. Jehoshaphat has said, let's go and meet him. If he put water in the hands of Elijah, then he is good to go. And they went there. Elisha said, if it is not for this Jehoshaphat, I will not listen to any of you. But he said, Get me a minstrel. Oh, hallelujah. That's Second Kings chapter 3, from verse 15 to verse 17. Get me a minstrel. And the Bible says, when the minstrel began to play, then the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha, and he began to speak. He said, thus says the Lord, the valley shall be filled, not through wind, not through the rain. Go and make more dishes. The valley shall be filled. They had God. You will begin to hear God. You begin to see visions. And another integral thing is that you have to be meek. Don't claim you know it. Don't assume you know it. Be meek. 
be humble. God resists the proud. And the same God elevates the humble. Look at what the Bible says in Psalm 25, verse 9. He said, the meek will he guide in judgment. God is committed to guiding the meek. And he says, and the meek will he teach his way. He will always give the meek direction. I pray today we'll make up our mind to submit to God, to surrender to him totally. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. He said, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Observe my ways, not man's ways. Give me your heart. God is interested in your heart. It's a fundamental requirement to show your meek. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. That shows you are meek. You are saying without you, Lord, I am nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. You are saying, no, Lord, a man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 27. You are saying, what do I have that heaven didn't give me? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. The other one is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 27. Or you are like Paul, who says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. That is meekness. Knowing that it is God all the way. Like John the Baptist, that let him increase in my life and I will decrease. If that is your heartbeat today, then welcome on board. God wants to direct you, he wants to direct me. I want you to pray. Say, oh Lord, show me your way. Reveal your way to me. Unfold your plans for me part time. I don't want to be confused in the affairs of life. You are not the author of confusion. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 33. You are not. Lord, I don't want to be confused. Jesus said, as God sent me, so I sent you. I send you. I call God. Call upon him today. Jesus sent me like you sent him. He was not confused. I don't want to be confused in the affairs of life. Lord, I want to hear you open my ears. I want to see you open my eyes. Job chapter 42 verse 5, Job said, I had you by the hearing of the ears, but now my eyes see it today. Father, help me. I want you to continue to pray this prayer. Oh Lord, reveal the secret of my life to me. That's number one. Number two, oh Lord, reveal the secret of my real level to me. Number three, oh Lord, reveal the secrets of my stubborn problems to me, the stubborn problems of my community, of my environment, the stubborn problems of families, of marriages, the stubborn problem of children, of youths, of husbands, of wives, the stubborn problems of single mothers, single parents, the stubborn problem of the nations of the world, O oh God, reveal to me. I want to be your answer and your solution in the affairs of life. I want you to pray this prayer. God is willing, ever willing, to show us and begin to live a life of thanksgiving. Don't complain, don't grumble, don't murmur, because that will blacken your eyes and block your ears from hearing him. Thank you for joining me in these encounters. Remember, it is loving God with all your heart. It is loving people. You cannot say you love God and you hate humanity. It is touching lives positively and serving our God. Serving God is serving humanity. Don't forget that. I am fresh fire. We are missionaries connecting the whole world with God's love. Hello there. Are you worshiping with us for the first time? Congratulations! You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. 
We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, friction and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence, and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.